In the name of our loving God, amen. amen. Please be seated. It's a great joy for me to be here at All Saints this morning. I should say finally, because as your rector knows, I've wanted to make my way here for a number of years, and finally, today is the day. And greetings to all of you who have come out on this frigid Sunday morning, and for all of those who are worshiping with us online. I have to say, February is not my favorite month. As you can see outside, we're in the depth of winter with short, cold days, with long, icy nights. It's dark. Today it's bright, but it's often very dark. And it's been a cold time in the weather and in the world. Our national political scene is a mess. We no longer listen. We demonize. On top of all that, it's tax time. And as you well know, COVID is still with us. It feels like we're a nation of ghosts. We're a haunted city in a haunted world as we struggle against an unseen, deadly enemy still after two years. So friends, this morning we need some joy. We also need a miracle. And today in this service, we are going to experience both joy and miracle. My favorite task as a bishop is to preside over confirmations and receptions and reaffirmation of Episcopalians who are making in public an adult profession of faith. It's a glorious event to be with people these days who are deeply and truly committing themselves this morning publicly to Jesus. And as you hear the voices of the nine people who are coming forward this morning, I think you'll agree with me. This is exactly what we need. We need it as a church. We need it as a city. And as you hear the voices of these nine people coming forward, I think you'll agree with me. Their lives have been miraculous. And besides that, if that weren't enough to raise our spirits and warm our hearts this cold morning, we're going to witness another miracle. And we'll discover how God uses ordinary people, even the tired, even the cranky, to reveal the magnitude of God's power, sometimes when we least expect it. Let's set the scene as we heard it read by Deacon Jennifer from Luke's Gospel. Jesus has finished speaking the Word of God to an appreciative crowd as he sat on Peter's fishing boat just offshore on the Sea of Galilee, that beautiful blue sea. Get this image. We don't usually think of Jesus sitting on a boat preaching to people, but that's what's happening in this Gospel. He's sitting on a boat, and the crowd is gathered on this beautiful beach of the Sea of Galilee. And then he says to Peter, go out into the lake and do some fishing. But it's early in the morning. Peter and his other commercial fishermen have been out all night fishing and didn't catch anything. As the old song goes, some days there just ain't no fish. And that day for them, there were no fish. So they were frustrated. They were annoyed. They were exhausted. You know what they're talking about? We feel like that these very days. Who doesn't feel exhausted and tired after two years of COVID? 
And they said to them, it's time to clean up the boats, have some breakfast, and let us go home and have some sleep. But here is this landlubber, Jesus, trying to tell the professional fisherman, Peter, and his friends how to do their job. And surprisingly, Peter listens to what Jesus has to say to him. This is impetuous Peter, who over and over in the Gospels will let his enthusiasm get in the way of common sense. The blustering Peter, who engages his mouth before putting his brain in gear over and over again in the gospel stories. who will boast of his loyalty to Jesus, but then he'll deny Jesus. Yet here at the very beginning of the ministry of Jesus, here is Peter, the obedient fisherman, saying to Jesus, if you say so, I will let down my nets. And what happens? We heard our deacon read what happened at that next minute. The nets are filled to breaking, so much so that Peter has to call more friends to come and help them manage this huge, giant cache of fish. Peter is stunned. He proclaims his unworthiness before this astounding deed of these fish. And he says, go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. But Jesus offers him at that very moment a cleansing word. And Jesus says to him, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And these words, do not be afraid, we hear over and over again from Jesus and from angels as they bring holy messages. You're anxious, you're tired, you're exhausted. The word is, do not be afraid. And these are exactly the right words as Peter, James, and John turn away from this huge catch of fish, their livelihood, their fishing boats, their families, and what do they do? They turn around at that moment and they start following Jesus. This huge catch of fish, hungry, and they put all that down at that very moment and they follow Jesus. So there are a lot of miracles right here. The huge catch of fish, Peter's willingness to set aside his tiredness and to obey Jesus at that moment, the turning around of three disciples to set their own lives on a different path just at that moment, and to help Jesus to create the kingdom of God. All of this does one thing. It reveals the power of God to change, to change people, and thereby change the world. So it's Peter's willingness to obey Jesus at that very moment that opens the door to this series of miracles that happen. So there is a human response that's important for the miracles to start happening. What if, what if Peter had said, nothing doing? I'm the experienced fisherman. You don't know what you're talking about. This is a waste of time to go back out there and fish. We're tired and going home, but Peter did not do that. He followed Jesus. Let's come back to today and look at the disciples sitting on both sides right here in the front of this church. People who this morning are affirming their desire in their daily lives to create the kingdom of God in Brooklyn. They come from all over the world, from many backgrounds and faith traditions, but they follow exactly in the path of what these disciples did in the gospel story we heard this morning. It's being repeated this morning right before our eyes. This is what I hear in the voices of these helpers. And let me introduce them. We are confirming six people. Here's Joelle, who fell in love with her church home in New Jersey. And now she's found a new church home right here. 
and she wants to be involved. She told me I would love to be confirmed. Hang on just a minute longer, Joelle, and it's going to happen. Here is Lori, a member of this church for seven years, serving God as a member of the vestry. Here is Doria, who admits she once doubted the existence of God, but she said, my journey back to faith is personal. It is serious. And it stems from the realization that it's through surrender and vulnerability that I am able to offer service to others. And Allegra, who will graduate from seminary, Berkeley at Yale, this spring with a degree in divinity and another degree in environmental studies, caring for God's creation, and she is exploring a vocation in ordained ministry or as a member of a monastic community in our church. And we hear from Jay about her commitment to social justice and equity. And Spencer tells us he spent time as a non-believer and a spiritual but not religious person until he became fully religious and a Christian in his late 20s and started coming here to All Saints. And we will receive into the Episcopal Church Garland, who when he lived in the South was attracted by the support of the local Episcopal Church for LGBTQ and anti-war causes. And he says, I came for the liberalism, but I stayed for the liturgy. That is a great quote. I can assure you I'm going to use it in a lot of sermons from now on. That's the, that ought to be the motto of the Episcopal Church. I'm just telling you that this morning. I came for the liberalism, but I stayed for the liturgy. And we will receive Jeffrey, who lost his faith when his wife died, but then a friend brought him to All Saints, where he found in this place peace and belonging. Well, let's take a moment to thank that friend for helping Jeffrey find new life in this place. And Leela will re reaffirm her faith. She tells us she is a 34-year-old queer, Iranian, American, dedicated to the liberation of all oppressed people. Like Peter and James and John, like the rest of us, these are people who are capable of extraordinary things. And we're so lucky to have them coming into our church in this way. When God asks, whom shall I send and who will go for us, they have responded, here I am, send me. I'd like to ask the nine of you, I guess we can call them the All Saints Nine. I'll ask the All Saints Nine, please, to stand at this moment. And I'm going to give you a charge. First of all, remember what we read in our psalm today, that though the Lord be high, he cares for all of us. This is the essential nature of God. Second, be not afraid. Jesus' words. Third, listen to God's call and obey. And fourth, be joyful. Somebody asked me the other day, what is the purpose of the church? I think a great purpose of the church is to bring people to moments of joy. And this moment is a moment of joy. This is a dark and cold time. In weather and in world, when fear walks beside us and hope lags behind, may the light of Jesus illuminate our world through the nine of you. Thanks be to God for All Saints Church, this wonderful platform for all that happens today. Amen.